We're here to talk specifically about the case that the Supreme Court has taken, uh, United States versus Windsor, which challenges Section 3 of DOMA, and Section 3 of DOMA says that the federal government will only recognize opposite sex marriages. Um, now, the court may or may not decide whether or not Section 3 of DOMA is constitutional um, because it might choose, it, it might reach the question of whether or not states have to recognize same-sex marriage in a different case. And if the court were to say that states must recognize same-sex marriage, what would happen to this case challenging DOMA? This case would basically dissolve because um, the essence of the Windsor case is just that the federal government must respect state determinations of same-sex marriage. Um, and if the court decides that all states must honor same-sex marriage, well, then, of course, the federal government is going to honor same-sex marriages. The court could find that there is no federal constitutional right to same-sex marriage and at the same time say it's up to states to decide whether they want to confer marriage licenses on same-sex couples. So what are some of the arguments that DOMA is in fact unconstitutional, or at least Section 3 of DOMA? Section 3 of DOMA does something that Congress has never done before. Congress has always been tremendously deferential to state determinations of family status. In fact, there is a good deal of case law saying that Congress must be deferential to state determinations of family status. And what I mean by family status at this point in our history is pretty much marital status and parental status. So there's always been tremendous variety in the ways that different states decide who can marry, when they can marry, who can divorce, when they can divorce, who counts as a parent for different purposes. And Federal law often relies on those state determinations of both marital status and parental status. So there are entitlements and obligations under federal law if one is a spouse and if one is a parent. But the actual determination of whether one is married or whether one is a parent has always been left up to the states. What really might have been going on in the passage of DOMA was a kind of animus towards same-sex couples. Exactly. But what are some of the arguments uh, that are being made in defense of DOMA? So um, a, a seemingly very logical and intuitive argument that is made is that Congress's, well, the federal government's life would be much easier if there was a uniform federal marriage policy, if the federal government knew that it was supposed to treat all same-sex couples one way and all non-same-sex, all opposite-sex couples another way. and. Um, as I say, that's sort of intuitively appealing. In my opinion, the problem with that argument is that there's actually always been tremendous diversity between the states with regard to who counts as married. So the status quo, the normal thing for the federal government to do, has always been to look to the individual state law of marriage to determine whether someone was married for federal purposes. There's an argument that um, Congress was worried about as the name would imply, defending the traditional institution of marriage, that same-sex marriage um, creates a really kind of seismic change in the way we think about marriage. And it was perfectly legitimate for Congress to try and slow down the train a little bit and say, we're a little bit worried about what this change is going to mean to the traditional definition of marriage, and we want to take our time before we recognize it. And it seems that that might, uh, the people who are attacking DOMA might say, but that sounds like animus. That sounds like singling out. It, 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 it might sound like animus to some. Um, the other argument that, that I think uh, suggests that, that, that it's um, at least pretext is if you look at congressional behavior in the 1940s and 50s and early 60s in this country, um, when there really was a tremendous the huge social and legal change with regard to the definition of marriage. This was a time when there was tremendous diversity with regard to what divorce law said in all sorts of different states. And people recognized that it was actually kind of a mess and it was kind of weird that someone could be divorced in one state and not divorced in another. But Congress never stepped into the picture to enunciate a federal definition of divorce. It was 
quite clear that most members of Congress thought that that was not appropriate congressional action. And there's a very strong argument that as between same-sex marriage and the move to no fault in the 1960s, the latter was a more significant disruption of the traditional definition of marriage than so there are a couple of other justifications that have been offered in defense of DOMA, just to, to mention them briefly. Uh, the federal government might argue, or the people defending DOMA, which is actually not the, the Obama administration, but a group of uh, Republican re legislators, might argue that, it, that DOMA helps to protect the federal treasury. Your marital status brings both benefits and obligations, and sometimes those obligations mean that people have a responsibility to pay for their spouses. And sometimes if the marriages aren't recognized, then um, people don't have an obligation to pay for their spouses, and um, then those spouses need various forms of aid. And there are same-sex couples who, because they're not treated as married for federal purposes, actually pay fewer taxes. The irony is that all the studies that have been done since then suggest that, Domo, uh, that recognizing same-sex marriage would save the federal government money.